What is going on everyone? Larry from the Shizzle Never Get Back again with yet another video. Uh, you guys probably remember that I actually did a uh, tutorial video on how to configure uh, EPSXE and this time I'm going to be doing it again. This time updated. Um, the last time I actually did it, some people actually didn't like it because they thought that the settings that I used wasn't really all that good. But now I'm actually going to make one that's actually better. <clears throat> Okay, so right now I'm actually recording this from a cloud PC using paper space, so that's why, if, if you guys see what I got right here, um, that's why I got these tech specs right here. You can clearly see that the processor I have is Intel Xeon, and I have 32 gigs of RAM on it. So yeah, it's a really fast PC, um, but now I can f basically use this at its full potential now. So, with that said though, let's get started, shall we? Um, I'm going to use the wizard set, I'm going to use the wizard guide here. Alright, so first of all, you obviously want to download EPSXC, and another thing you'll want to do is that you'll want to keep it somewhere in the documents, basically wherever you know where it is. So I keep it in the documents area, and what I usually do is that I take the software, you see the application right here? What I do is that I usually um, right click on it, right? I, I click on uh, create shortcut, and then I literally leave it sitting there, just so that way I can easily access it. Another thing is is that you'll want to make sure you have BIOS as well. You can usually download this off of Emu Paradise. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's usually available on Emu Paradise. Um, that's also where I download some of my ROMs, but I'll get to the ROM recommendations in a second. All right. So here we go. You can easily come in here, right? The, this this um, section has every single BIOS for every uh, emulator you can think of from 3DO all the way down to uh, what is that it looks like expand I'm not sure what that is um, anyway um, you can see that the PlayStation 1 is right around here you can also see that it's also right here too but here's the BIOS pack too which has 15 images which I highly recommend you download you should download this one right here and there you go it has all the bios on here now this one is american as well as uh this one too. i think this one's this one's american too right um I, I think it's actually 7501 actually that's american not 7502 that's actually european but most people tend to use scph 1001 so stick with that but we're gonna get to that when we get, uh get into the wizard guide okay <clears throat> So right here, you uh, the covers aren't necessarily uh, you know a huge part, but they are. Uh, I will actually talk about the covers when we uh, finally set up EPSXE. Another thing you want to make sure is that you have your plugins in this version because the plugins do not come with the. Uh, it does not come with the emulator. You have to download it separately. What you could do is that you could search up uh, EPSXE plugins, right? And then you'll come to this page right here, or you could download the one that's off of IS ISO Zone, which has everything you'll want in it, including all the shader collections and all that. But if you're tr but if you're but if you're creating like your own standalone uh, plugins and whatnot, well, not I wouldn't say you're creating the plugins, but rather you're just setting up your uh, the emulator on your own. You will want to come to here. This is where you can download uh, the GPUs, the sound plugins, and the CDRs. Everything you will need is here, including PS2 plugins. And <clears throat> just for the record, PS2 plugins do support EPSXE, actually. I thought I thought it out there. Okay. Now, now, now with that said, I will show you how to configure it. So obviously you want to go to the wizards to the wizard guide, right? The memory cards are usually already set up there because uh, the memory cards are usually in here by default, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, um, I'm gonna go into the wizard guide. Every single time you first start up EPSXE, this is the first menu you'll see. So you'll want to click on config, right? All right. SCPH 101 is the one that uh, the EPSXE team recommends. You can also use other BIOS if you wish to. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. If you're a Japanese or you're US, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but you can always go with the recommended one. doesn't really matter which one you pick, really, because all, all of them work. It's just that the EPSXE team has personal recommendations, which I highly suggest you stick with them. <clears throat> so anyway, um, if you do have a good uh, processor, which I will actually keep this open just to reiterate, you know, what the processor type is. Uh, usually powerful processors like uh, Intel Xeon usually work very well on uh, OpenGL. So you'll definitely want OpenGL, okay? 
Uh, usually it's peas. Th this is the one. This is actually one of the many few uh, plugins that they recommend, right? Because you can see that it has uh, NVIDIA GeForce, and that's another thing. I also forgot to mention that uh, NV I do have NVIDIA on here. I think it's um, I can't remember. I think it's I think it's Quadro, in NVIDIA Quadro. I think it is. I can't remember, but those are the plugins you want, right? So you want to click on OpenGL. Now I want to click on Config, right? You'll definitely want to click on Nice, right? Which I already did. So you'll definitely want to click on Nice, and what will happen is that you'll get all this uh, plugin. You'll get all these settings right here. As you will see, uh, the resolutions will be high as well as the compatibility. Um, I actually, I actually manually set this right here, but with the Nice preset, it'll actually cause the graphics to go this high. Actually, that one stays the same. So yeah, this is uh, the plugins as, as they are on high. Here's the texture. There's here's the texture filtering. If your CPU is very very strong, then you could definitely use the texture filtering to uh, upscale the graphics as well as the higher res one. Uh, it's gonna require a lot of VRAM and uh, filtering as well. Um, the M deck filter actually makes the helps the movies look less pixelated, and the screen filtering helps you know filter the full screen. And uh, I want to make sure that I change the resolution to this right here. And if I was to have this in full screen, I would definitely want to keep it somewhere around here. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's about it. This is what this is exactly what your settings should look like. Definitely want to keep the FPS on auto detect. Okay. So yeah, for those of you who are you know watching this video, definitely pause the video and definitely copy the settings in case in case you guys can't catch up. And that's about it. This is what your study should look like. Now we're going to go to next. And uh, if you're looking for the best uh, S, uh, sound quality on uh, EPSXE, definitely go for e, uh, Eternal S, S CPU. Okay? SPU, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to know what P, what PEO, what, what the PEO D sounds audio drivers are, they do allow you to... Uh, they do allow you to record your own uh, sound, and is definitely the third recommended uh, sound plugin by the EPSXE team, and it produces nice effects. I personally use Eternal. Uh, when you come on to here, you'll definitely want to make sure you have it on direct sound, right? Uh, the buffer the buffer size should stay the same, um, and right here, uh, yeah, definitely keep that checked. Uh, you d you can definitely use the special game fixes if you're using it for like uh, Final Fantasy like eight or nine and other Square games, as well as CPU action as well for games like uh, Valkyrie Profile, Star Ocean, and Metal Gear Solid. But other than that, you don't really need to touch them. Most of the time, you don't really need to touch them anyways. But uh, just make sure that you keep the CD-ROMs on the regular um, EPSXE CDR core plugins. Um, and now we come to the controller. Now here is where everything uh, comes to life here. So obviously I already set I already set up the controls for my keyboard. Um, I I'm actually not using the controller at the moment, but I do. If you're wondering, I do use controllers to play on my emulators. It's just that I'm not using it right now. That's all. So you can actually set up a controller on here. Like if you guys use PS4, the one uh, software that I recommend would be this one input I recommend two of them I recommend input mapper as well as DS4 windows those are two so those are two um those are two PS4 DualShock 4 uh, programs that I recommend input mapper and this one they both work under the Bluetooth and USB um, compatibility and they emulate what's on an Xbox 360 controller so I highly recommend those so really all you really do here is just set up your controls um, other than that, there's nothing else different to do. Um, so yeah, that's about it. That's how you configure EPSXE. Now, the fun part is, is that you want to make sure that you also have your ROMs, right? There's usually a default, um, ISOs folder. So you can see that my ROMs are in here. I got Bloody Roar 2, Crash Bandicoot, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid, Tekken, Twisted Metal, Ridge Racer, all that, all that, you know. Um, <clears throat> so... You want to make sure that you put your ISOs in here, or some people like to place their ISOs in different places, like 
outside of this folder so it really doesn't matter where you place it just make sure you have a good idea on where it is most of the time I highly recommend you just place them in the ISO's folder here because at least the EPSI simulator already knows where it is now you have three ways of starting it up um, I can actually talk about local net play in a separate video just let me know if you want to see that okay now you can actually choose to run ISO with this however with um, EPSIC version 2, there's one cool thing that actually I recommend personally. You see this option right here? It's called Open Game List. So you click on that, and what happens is that you'll have a list of your games. All, every game that you downloaded that, that came from the ISOs folder is all appearing right here, as you can see. Now the thing is, though, is that you'll want to make sure that you have the folder path. So you can clearly see that it's in documents, EPSXE, and ISOs. You'll want to make sure it's in that same path. That way, EPSXE can detect where the games are, right? And then when you do that, you'll want to click on refresh. And then what will happen is that the games will show up. So, so like, say if you add in, like, a new game in the ISOs folder, you'll want to make sure you hit refresh every time so that way EPSXE can detect it. And in case there are no covers for your game, all you gotta do is just click on this little button right here get covers and then what happens is that they automatically download the covers to the game and there you go and hopefully I explained that in the best way I could without making people's brains hurt <laughs> um so yeah this is what it's gonna look like on a uh, oh I also forgot to mention a 64 bit but that's common anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a random game uh, and by random I kinda like to use that word loosely because I'm just gonna choose a game um, so the game that I'm going to use, I'm, I'm going to pick Tekken 2 here, uh, since, you know, I use Tekken 2 a lot when I make these kinds of videos, okay? So obviously you can see the controllers turned on, and there you go, the, 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 <laughs> the game starts up. And as you can hear, it sounds fine, and it plays fine and everything. So yeah, as you can see, it, it plays and sounds just fine, and it runs very well. Now, I'm going to get into the gameplay here. Here, I'm going to pick one. Alright. So, we're going to go into match against Lei Wulong. Round! Fight! <laughs> now, there is a little bit of lag, mostly caused by the, um, later. But other than that, it's very playable. And this is what it's like when the, uh, the settings are on height. As you can see, it looks really, really good. Which is exactly what we want to do the simulator, right? And we want to make sure that, uh, So yeah, there you go. This is how EPSIC works. I guys do want to know another example. Uh, I don't mind you being with you. Hey, yo! So, but I just want to say that it's actually worse. Hey, Hachi, I'm Ishima! Ishima. Yeah. Win! The only, what you can do also is that, um, you could actually switch uh, discs right here, but what I usually do is that I usually like to exit out and then I like to come back in. It helps out a whole lot better. Um, but just in case the, uh, you know, the game ever lags on you, you can actually turn it down to standard right here. But like I said, it only depends on how powerful your computer is. But most of the time, you don't really need to touch them. But, I'm only did, but I only did that for the sake of the uh, screen recorder. If I wasn't screen recording, it probably would have recorded much better. And even then, um, Bandicam usually works on the other games that I have on here. Like all my Steam games, like uh, King of Fighters 13 and all that. They usually wor it usually works just fine on there. But EPSXC works differently. But that's not the point. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna boot up another game. Um, here I'll boot up Metal Gear Solid since you know I love Metal Gear Solid and I know a lot of you guys love this game. I mean, who doesn't really love it? It's one of my it's one of my favorites on PlayStation One. So here we go. Now the thing is, is that when you uh, emulate certain games, they do uh, run differently. So there we go. We already got Metal Gear Solid up. All right. So what I'm gonna do is that uh, I'm just gonna I can t I can do the VR train, which I, I think I might do that. 
But don't you hear how the sound is kind of messing up? That's why, that's why they do say that you should uh, use some game fixes from games like this. But for now, I'm just only showing you how the game plays on this image. I keep forgetting that circle is uh, select. I gotta But don't you see how well the game looks? The game looks really, really well, as you can see. But don't you hear how the sound is kind of messing up? It really is, so, um... The special fix where I told you uh, where you should check only if you're playing this game, definitely check that because you can clearly hear that there's a huge uh, audio delay problem with this game. So you'll definitely want to uh, do that. But other than that, you can clearly see that the game plays just fine. It's just that there's a huge delay with the audio. And the music is not really playing all that well. Too. What was that noise? Hmm. So that and so that pretty much concludes this tutorial on how to configure uh, EPSXE. Uh, like I said, it's pretty. It's 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 actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it. You can clearly see I just clicked the check on there. Um, but yeah, you can clearly see that it's very easy to use. It's honestly. Um, it's honestly one of the best emulators out there. Um, I'm actually considering making a um, a list video where I talk about some of the greatest emulators for PC. Uh, if you guys do ever want to see something like that, be sure to let me know. Because I would honestly be interested in making a video where, you know, do this. Where, I, where I do something like that. Because honestly, it, it is a very interesting project. It's a very interesting project, but um, just let me know if you guys want to see that. After all, I mean, I do this make a, snake. I do make uh, list videos anyway, so that'd be great. Oh yeah, and I never done a, I actually never did a Metal Gear Solid playthrough of this game on uh, Shizzo Network. But if you guys ever do want to see um a Metal Gear Solid playthrough, uh yeah, definitely let me know. I would, I, I'm actually interested in doing it. But you already know that I really, really love this game. Ultimately, Dean is one of the classes on the PlayStation 1. Uh, you can play this one. Now, I know there is a way where people, uh, kind of, you know, use some frame packs where they kind of make the game run at 60 frames per second, I believe, unless I'm wrong. But that's just my assumption. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not really 100% uh, sure about it. some slight lag to it but other than that the game is very playable uh -oh. oh yeah and just FYI I'm not the greatest Metal Gear Solid player ever but I do try my best when I you know every single time I play the game so yeah I'm not gonna call myself the greatest here <laughs> anyways please don't get me on here.